Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, my name is Chelsea Mann. I'm a field education trainer for Wella Professional, and today we're going to talk about we, me, I'm here by myself. Uh, we're going to talk about arguably the most important thing that we do in our process with our clients as hairdressers. We're going to talk about consultation. Now I know it seems like it's not uh, it's not as exciting a thing or not as a big big of a deal to talk about, but I'm telling you guys as I'm sitting here talking to you right now, this is definitely the most important thing you do uh, as as a hairdresser with your clients and really the space in which you will make or break your relationship with your client and the longevity of your relationship with your client. So uh, again, my name is Chelsea Mann with Wella Professional. Um, I just want to say a couple, uh, a couple things, a quick thank you to uh, my colleagues at Wella Canada West for hosting me today um, and you know creating this space for us to bring education to you guys. I know it's a, a weird sort of time right now, um, but we're excited to still bring you guys the same education that, uh, that we do just in a different way. So we hope you guys are enjoying it and please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, with requests and we were just our team was just talking about some requests that we've had yesterday that we're definitely going to bring to life for you guys So please let us know if you if there's anything in particular you'd like to see um, Also, if you guys have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to put them in the question card. They're right there Sorry about my chipped nail, but I don't have time to get it fixed right now uh, There's question cards right there so if you guys have a question, feel free to put them into the comments. Sometimes the comments go really quickly and I don't want to miss anything. So if you have questions, throw them into the comments, totally fine. Um, but if you can use the question cards, even better, because it sends me a little thing that somebody has a question. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to go through why do we consult? How do we do it? What marks do we want to hit? And I'm going to give you guys some really great resources um, in order to find the details that you need. Um, in order to bring these consultations to life, okay? Thank you in the comments. I love my hair too. My hairdresser is really great. Shout out to Jill at Rose and Onyx in, uh, here in St. Albert. So, um, so yeah, let's get started with consult. So the first thing I want to talk about is why do we consult with our clients? What, uh, what do we expect to get out of a consultation? So I believe that a good consultation begins from your front end person. It begins the second that your client walks in the door. What sort of things are greeting them as they walk in the door? Who's talking to them? Who is their first point of contact, right? Usually this is, I don't like this word, but everybody understands it. Usually it's a receptionist or a front end, you know, person. Um, I like to think of them as managers or in my case, usually therapists. <laughs> Um, but you know, our front end staff is really, really important. These are people that are greeting our clients and are really setting the tone, uh, for the visit and, and for that, that stylist or that, um, client's visit. Uh, if it's busy in the salon and the front end person or the manager seems to be, um, uh, agitated or irritated or, or too busy to talk to the person as they come in the door, that really sets the tone, uh, for the appointment. So we really rely on our managers and our front end staff. Uh, to kind of set that tone for us. Even if it's busy, they're the ones that can say to the client, you know, have a seat, your stylist will be right with you. What can I bring you? And I know that these things look different in a, you know, in, in a COVID world, but we'll, we'll talk in general terms today, I think. So front end person, super important, okay? So we wanna see those clients greeted. We wanna see them, uh, you know, make sure our front end people know who they are and are getting to know these clients the same as we are, because they're really a super valuable part of the team, okay? Uh, the other thing that I think sets the tone uh, in consultation, the first steps of our consultation, is what the front end or the entryway or waiting area of your, your salon looks like. My favorites and the best I've ever seen it done is when I walk into a salon and the front, uh, the front end uh, or the waiting area looks branded like their Instagram. Okay. Uh, a lot of times in a lot of spaces now, people are finding their hairdressers on Instagram or they're looking up their Instagrams. So if your Instagram is branded well, um, you, that branding should carry through into especially the front end and the decoration in your, in your salon, right? So you want your clients to walk in and feel at home and feel comfortable that they can match up how it feels in the salon to, um, the branding that's done online, on your website, on Instagram primarily, okay? Um, so let's skip ahead to our steps of consultation. So let's say we've you know, gone up to our waiting area, we've taken our client or they've been seated. Um, sometimes we have 
Uh, so I've seen salons that have um, consultation pods or consultation areas. Um, so that's a really sort of important thing to be aware of, but we're going to come back to that. Um, so if you have your client seated, okay, and, and we're going to get into to talking about consultation, I think one of the biggest considerations in why we consult um, is that every client needs to get a consultation, right? Uh, I watched one, I watched back one of our Instagram lives earlier and my colleague Nichelle said it, um, that a lot of times when we get comfortable with our clients, if it's a long-term client or I call them mortgage payer clients, clients that are, we have long-term relationships with clients who have, uh, you know, have a lot of loyalty to us and, you know, we've built an intimate relationship with, um, those are clients that sometimes unfortunately get neglected in consultation, right? And it's not because we're trying to be jerks. Um, it's just because we get to know somebody, it's an intimate business, we get comfortable and we say to those clients, hey, we're doing the same thing as last time, awesome, I'll go mix up your color. When really at that point, that client eventually, maybe not every time, but will sit there and think, oh, I was going to ask for something new, but I guess she's too busy or, you know, any number of things that can go through their minds that may make them feel neglected, right? So these clients are really, really important for us to uh, continually uh, maintain our relationships with. And one way that I do this um, is making sure that every client, regardless of how long they've been coming to the salon, regardless of how long I've been doing their hair, uh, regardless of who they are, gets an in-depth consultation. Okay. Now people have said to me in the past, well, if I know that so-and-so is only going to get, is only ever going to get a root touch and she's never going to change her color, why would I bother? And the answer to that is that you as hairdressers, one of the biggest things one of my mentors ever taught me was that, you know, a, a hairdresser doesn't make their money in color and product and those sorts of things. They make their money in building relationships, right? I tell all of my students, I'm not interested in having clients money one time. That's a waste for me. I want your money over and over and over again. I want to do your hair over and over and over again. I want you to tell your friends right? So if I'm not putting the time into building that relationship with you or facilitating that relationship with you, it's not something uh, that, you know, the, the loyalty just isn't there, right? So um, I think that's really important with our longtime clients to have them get the same sort of consultation and the same sort of attention that our new clients might get, right? I know we've all, you know, been approached by other companies in the past who I won't name names, but maybe have our cell phone accounts or our cable TV accounts. And we see them online offering new clients iPads or kickbacks or bonuses. Oh, sign up with us and you get this bonus. Well, I'd be sitting there as a current customer going, where's my 50 inch screen TV? You know, I don't need the TV. It's just about, you know, that loyalty piece and not being neglected as an existing client. Okay. So we're going to go through uh, the steps of consultation. Um, and the first thing I want to talk about, and I hope that you, everybody that's watching uh, already has this, but I want to talk quickly about the app. Wella Education has this really amazing app that we use that stores all of our information. If you're a Wella salon and you need information about our products at your fingertips, it's all on the app. If you have questions, you can go to the app. You guys can always reach out to us on Instagram, text message, email. We're super available, but the app is really great at your tip, at your fingertips information, including for consultation. So if you don't have it, you go on your uh, Apple App Store or your Google Play Store and you type in Wella Education. It'll be the first one that comes up. OK, it's by Scissor Boy. That's how you'll know. OK, it looks like this. I'm sorry about my ring light. It looks like this. Okay, that's the icon for it when you see it. When you open it, it's gonna ask you to make an account, username, email address, password, those sorts of things. It's gonna ask you to identify yourself as a hairdresser um, and then you'll have access to all of this information. Okay, so I just wanna guide you guys through where to find the information that I'm talking about today so that you can refer back to it and maybe put some of it into practice. I want you guys to know too that Consultation isn't, there's no formula to this. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks and some things, some call outs and some questions to use. But when I do consultations, you'll, if you could watch me do it, you'd see that there's certain marks that I hit and certain questions that I ask consistently. But I like to tailor my consultations from uh, one client to the next. Okay. So when you get into the app, it'll look like this. Okay. On the bottom there, if you hit this plus sign, 
That's our menu, okay? It'll pop up like that. At the top in the middle there, we have something called the knowledge library, okay? I'm just gonna turn it around and face me because it's harder than it looks to do it backwards. This is our knowledge library, okay? So this is sort of the lifeblood of the app. This is where you're gonna find all of our information. If you, if you need information about color, you click on color and it'll bring up all of the things that we make. You'll be able to click on it and get the information. It's pretty user-friendly. Maybe we'll do another live only on the app, but I'm gonna trust that you guys can get it figured out. It's pretty easy, okay? When we get to this spot, I clicked on knowledge library from the menu, we're here. I'm gonna scroll down here uh, to where it says consultation tools, okay? If I click on that, it's gonna give me two options. The options are head sheets and hair color for plan for bridal clients. We're gonna click on head sheets and it'll bring it up like this. And then second from the bottom is consultation pad, okay? So consultation pad looks like this. I'm just gonna show it to you guys on the screen here, okay? The front of the consultation pad looks like that. Like that's the cover where it says consultation guide. And then if you had one hard copy, it would open like a book, okay? The inside of it looks like that, okay? And this is really, and then the, like the back cover is that one on the, to my left there, okay? Um, really the meat and potatoes of the consultation stuff I'm gonna talk about today is right there, okay? So if we talk about the steps to consultation, okay? The first one I want to talk about are the six elements of consultation. The first one I want to talk about um, is atmosphere, okay? And arguably, guys, this is going to be the most important control piece that you have when you're consulting, right? I've seen people do consultations and I've done consultations in many different ways. I've seen consultation pods. I've seen people go out for cigarettes and consult with a client who smokes because it's an comfortable environment. I've seen people cry during consultations and be really happy that they had a private space to do so, right? Um, so be very aware of your environment when you're consulting, okay? Um, I think this is important, especially for somebody like me. You can't tell right now because I'm sitting down, um, but I'm nearly six feet tall. So I tend to be, uh, you know, more overbearing, just naturally sort of overpowering, right? And I would never want to stand over a client and have them feel intimidated or feel like they can't talk to me because they're just like, oh my God, they're, you're so much. You know, I tend to be a lot the first time. Um, so for me, I tend to sit and I tend to be at eye level, okay? I like somebody to feel comfortable that we're just like, we're not a hairdresser and a client and this isn't a business transaction. We're just two people having a combo, right? So that's my first tip for you is sit at eye level, make sure that you can make somebody feel super comfortable talking to you, okay? Use that intimacy of this business to be able to facilitate a conversation, okay? The second thing uh, that I like to do as far as it relates to um, environment um, is I like to allow my client to take the lead, right? I like to allow them to start to talk to me. Now, where this becomes problematic is where they jump straight in because they've maybe had bad consultations or no consultations in the past. They start to talk about hair. This, here, let me show you my inspo pictures. This is what I want to see and whatever, which if they have things to show you, great. I, I'm somebody who loves inspo pictures. I'm a fan, right? Uh, which that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> um, but it, I, I, you know, I'll look at the things that the client wants uh, to show me, but I like to start with lifestyle questions. Okay. Lifestyle questions, meaning questions or conversations that have nothing to do with hair, or the, at least the client thinks they have nothing to do with hair, right? This is one of the little like hairdresser magic tricks that I like to use. You sit down with a client and that client starts to talk about their life, right? And you can lead this conversation. If it's five o'clock in the evening and the person who's sitting in your chair um, is wearing a suit or is dressed up, you could draw an inference that they came from work, right? So say to them, how was work today? right? And they'll say, maybe, they, maybe it'll be short and sweet. And they'll say, oh, good. And that tells me the same thing that it tells me when somebody sits next to me on an airplane and puts their headphones on. I don't want to talk to you, right? So if somebody sort of approaches you in that way, maybe you need to stick to the script a little bit. But a lot of times people will say, oh, you know, I, I had a great day. I did this and that. And it starts to open them up talking about their lives, right? I'm a big believer that the more a client tells you about their life, the more loyalty you're gonna be, be able to build, the more longevity you're gonna be able to have uh, with, their, with that client. And from a practical standpoint, guys, I make no bones about it, the more money you're going to make 
At the end of the day, intimate or not, guys, this is a business and we're all here to make money, right? So get to know that client. And the more you get to know that client, the more you're going to be able to plan out what their hair journey looks like and build that loyalty, right? If that client sits down and maybe it's the middle of the day and they're, you know, more casually dressed, um, maybe they'll start to say to you, Oh, you know, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I finally got somebody to watch my kids, right? Maybe they have young kids. Maybe they're stressed. Maybe they don't have a lot of time. All of these things really guys will translate to, you know, how much are they going to be able to maintain their hair? How often are they going to be able to be in here? What products can I, you know, do they need to maintain their hair at home, right? In the client's mind, they've told you nothing about their hair. But in your mind, these things all should translate to product sales, product usage, what services are appropriate for that client. If you guys take a look on the app at the consultation pad, you'll see that all of the products and the... Um, the things that we offer at well and all the services you offer will correspond to a client segmentation. Now, this is part of a bigger class that I don't have time for in the next 30 minutes. Um, but you guys can take a look at that on the app. OK, uh, so that's my first my first tip is make sure that you are sitting at eye level and lead with those lifestyle questions, guys. The more I'm telling you, 100 percent. The more you get to know your client, the more you're going to be able to build that long standing loyal relationship with them. And the more of their friends and their people um, they're going to send to you, which really in our business is the brass ring. OK, so that's my first step for you is atmosphere. My second step for you is personalization. Now on the app, they talk about lifestyle questions under the personalization step as well. Uh, which I think is really important. They also talk about making sure that you're gathering your information to build a picture of your client, which we kind of already touched on. We want to make sure that we're getting a, a great picture of who that client is so that we can personalize a service to that client. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I learned how to do hair in hair school, it was a lot of like, you know, one foil pattern. We learned how to do cap highlights. We learned, you know, very sort of basic things and you just step and repeat things um, on clients with different colors. The way that the industry is now is, you know, clients expect to have a bespoke and curated service that is made specifically for them, right? So now more, uh, you know, new baby hairdressers are learning more bodies of techniques that they can put together and personalize for the client, which I think is a much more creative and artistic space to live in as a stylist. You know, I hope you guys agree. Uh, so step two is personalization. We want to build that picture of that client and make sure that we're creating a custom service for that client. So the client that came in in the middle of the day with, you know, casually dressed and talked about, you know, having left kids at home is that's a, a little bit of information that we can use on a personalization level to say to ourselves, you know, and we don't need to maybe say this to them, but maybe the inspo picture that they showed us that's a global lightning service isn't their best option. Because is somebody like that going to be able to maintain that global lightning service every four weeks? No. But if you don't tell them that they're not going to be able to maintain it, you're going to be, um, you know, it's kind of going to be your fault when they didn't realize that, right? Whereas if you say to them, you know, I can see that you want to be really, really blonde, uh, but let's put a root shadow on it and you'll get some more longevity out of it. All of a sudden, you're a hero, right? All of a sudden, you've given this client something that they didn't even think of, but you're giving them the best of both worlds. All of that just from one little like, hey, how's your day? Not what do you want with your hair, right? Lifestyle questions, personalized, really important. So, oh, I'm just going to grab something. One second. Sorry. Uh, so step three uh, that we have here is advise. OK, and the biggest thing that you guys will see in the app when you look up the consultation pad um, is acting as a beauty coach. And I love this term beauty coach because hairdressers, you know, we use the term hairdresser. We use stylist. We use I use artist sometimes depending on the scenario. Right. Um, so but I love the idea of viewing ourselves as beauty coaches. OK, and beauty coach meaning exactly that how can I coach you to be the best version of yourself? Okay. And if you're anything like me, I know that, um, I, you know, feel my most beautiful 
in at different times you know i look back at pictures of myself on the red carpet or at certain events when i'm dressed up and i have a full face of makeup on and i look at those pictures i'm like oh i you know feel really beautiful but the most beautiful picture i think that exists of me uh my best friend took 30 seconds after i gave birth and really i look like i got punched in the face uh, but i certainly feel felt my most beautiful in that moment right so i think the idea of acting as a beauty coach really is about listening to those clients in consultation and making sure uh, that we're helping them achieve their best beautiful, what would look beautiful to them in their eyes, right? Not necessarily what, what we would think would look the best on them, right? But the coach part comes in where we talk about trends um, and we talk about what's in style right now and what we're doing, what we're seeing a lot of in the industry and marrying those things together. How can we help you look your most beautiful, but also help you look current um, and, you know, help you, you know, have your best maintenance schedule and have all of those things work together. Okay. Um, our fourth step um, I, that I think is really, really important is called objections. And I think this is where I see consultation other than when people try and do the, the oh, same thing, we'll do the same thing again. Objections is where I see it go really, really wrong. This is where I see people say things like that can't be done or, uh, you, you know, just sort of destroy the client's, you know, dreams. I believe if you've done the first three steps properly, you don't have that in your in your fourth step. Um, but sometimes we do have clients who um, have objections to what we're saying. They're very staunch in, you know, they came in asking for this specific thing um, and they, you know, don't want to see anything else. Those things, guys, I would say are few and far between, right? A lot of times when we're working with our clients, they are pretty open uh, to suggestion and to you, you know, having those beauty coach moments with them. Um, but make sure that if somebody does raise an objection, if they're saying to you, you know, this isn't really the direction I wanted to go or they're pushing you a little bit, that you're prepared to deal with that, right? So if somebody was pushing me, I mean, there will come a point where if somebody's asking me to do something with their hair that's wildly irresponsible, I'm simply going to refuse to do it, you know? And that's part of our responsibility as hairdressers is that if, you know, if somebody's wanting you to do something that you know you shouldn't be doing, you shouldn't be doing, you know? Um, but really, if somebody has fears around what they're asking for, or they're, you know, if they have objections in any way, we, I like to stick with open-ended questions, okay? I don't like to say things like, oh, is it the blonde that you're objecting to or that you have a problem with? That leaves them open to say yes or no. I like to make ask suggestive questions. What other things could we incorporate into this that would help you achieve your goal? Um, what sort of colors do you gravitate towards that'll make you more comfortable being your best self, right? Closed-ended questions will have you as a hairdresser or stylist come across as sort of abrupt or um, maybe closed-minded. Uh, so we wanna stick with open-ended questions that facilitate conversation, okay? Uh, fifth step is ideas, right? We wanna create a plan for our clients and we wanna make sure that we're sharing ideas um, based on the conversation that we've had. Now, my biggest thing that I think is the most important about that fifth step about ideas is creating a future plan, okay? Creating a future plan is super important. And I told you guys earlier, I'm not interested in one-time money. I don't do one-time clients. If I sniff out that you're only going to be here once, I, I'm not interested. I will, I will absolutely refer you to somebody else, but I like long-term clients. And the, the best advice I can give you guys in consultation to achieve that long-term relationship is making sure that you are creating that plan with that client, that you're saying to them, okay, you know, today's October 8th. Um, you know, we're, maybe we're doing fall hair. Maybe we're transitioning from a balayage into a Lux lights, which by the way, if you haven't seen our Lux lights services yet, look it up guys. It's really fun for our fall, our fall winter collection. Um, maybe we're going to transition a client into a more fall winter look, right? If that client has a little bit of anxiety. We can say to them, you know, maybe we'll do some low lights today. And then when I see you in eight weeks, um, if you're happy with what we did, then we'll make sure that we continue on. And then if you're ready to go darker, maybe you're a little bit less nervous we can incorporate a few other things, right? But now you've planted the seed with that client that, oh yes, I am going to be back here, right? Connect that with a pre-booking with your front end staff and your gold, right? So again, I could talk about this all day. 
Um, but I think that fifth step, uh, the most important part is creating that future plan. What is your hair going to look like in eight weeks, in 16 weeks, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, last but not least is summary. We want to make sure that we're summarizing what we decided to do, uh, with that client, uh, to make sure that everybody understands. Now the tragic flaw to summary guys. Okay. Please, please, please don't do this is over informing your clients. Okay. Sometimes there does call for a situation where we have to be a little bit more explanatory uh, with our clients. But the reality is I've watched hairstylists do this, guys, where they sit in front of their clients and say, OK, first, I'm going to use this product and I'm going to highlight it this way. And then we're going to do this. And they step by step their their service. And then eventually your client just gets like super overwhelmed um, and they're confused. And then you got to start the whole process over again. The reality, guys, is do your summary in your in your sixth step of your consultation um, and then leave it at that. Let the client relax. You go and do you. You know what you're doing. Have confidence in your skills and execute the process that you talked about in consultation. OK, don't over inform. OK, uh, I don't see any questions yet, which tells me that we're doing good. I will look at that in that way. Um, so I'm going to move on. I have a couple scenarios I wanted. Sorry, I'm just looking at my what I, my notes I wrote down here. Um, I wanted to tell you too, actually, one of our colleagues in the US, one of our fabulous Wella uh, people in the US, uh, a few years ago told me about a, a salon that she used to work at that did a really unique thing for consultations. And I want to share it with you guys because I thought it was really cool. This particular salon did what is called consultation nights. So I think she said it was, <coughs> excuse me, the first Wednesday of every month. They did consultation night. So you couldn't be a new client at this salon. You couldn't get an appointment without coming to a consultation night first, which when she first told me that I was kind of like, Ooh, I don't know how a consumer is going to feel about that. Then she told me what happens at consultation night is you pay as a client, you pay $50 for 30 minutes of your style of your chosen stylist time. Now, if you 30 minutes, when I say that doesn't seem like a lot of time, but I've been talking for 30 minutes now. And let me tell you, it's an eternity. If you got to spend 30 minutes with a client consulting and getting to know them, oh my God, usually in, in the salon guys, you have like three and a half minutes, right? So it was the client pays $50 for 30 minutes of the stylist time on this specific consultation night. Um, and then they make some decisions during that consultation time and book subsequent appointments. Um, if you, after, when you're at the consultation night as a client, if you booked an appointment, that $50 goes towards your appointment. It's a credit on your account. If you choose not to make an appointment also fine, but this, the, the deposit's non-refundable. The stylist gets to keep the $50 at that point for their time. Right? So will this formula work for, for every salon? No, but I did think that it was a really great for the salon that could do it. A salon that's busy enough to do it. Um, I thought it was a really great idea to have dedicated time where you're as a stylist, you're not in the salon freaking out. I have somebody else coming in. What am I going to do? And all this stuff. You have dedicated time with that client with no pressure whatsoever. I thought it was a really great call out. So thank you to Rochelle from our US team for that one. Okay. So I want to, I have some friends here. I want to give you guys some scenarios as far as consultation and what we look for. Okay. So the first one I'm going to show you is this one. This is my friend. I don't, my daughter hasn't named her yet, so I don't know what her name is. But if y'all ask her later and I'll report back. If we look at this person and my daughter's birthday was just on Monday. So that's why it's still in the box. I thought about taking it out and then I thought she'd be mad. But anyways, so if we look at this person, okay, I look at this person and as a hairdresser, I see, you know, a certain level of hair. I see that she doesn't have any roots. So either that's her you know, her natural color, or she just recently got her hair colored, which tells me one of two things, right? Either this person just recently got their hair colored, or um, she's just genetically super blessed, right? Either way, something I need to know, right? So uh, that's the first thing I see just because hairdresser first and foremost, right? Um, the other thing I see is how she's dressed. She's, uh, this is Dr. Barbie, okay? She obviously just came from work, Right. So there's some inferences that I can draw here from how she's dressed. Right. She's a doctor or a healthcare professional of some kind. So, you know, she's probably really, really busy, high stress job. Right. How often is this person going to be able to come into the hair salon? Right. I think instinctively, especially when we see somebody like this, we start to spend their money for them. Right. I don't do that. I don't assume that somebody can afford more or less based on 
you know, how, what their occupation is, things like that. I, I don't have those conversations. It's not my business. Um, but I think in this case, we could draw some inferences from her, <coughs> excuse me, from her occupation, right? Probably pretty busy, probably pretty high stress. So pretty busy tells me from a maintenance schedule, she may not be able to be in the salon as often, right? But um, from a high stress perspective, tells me that she probably really enjoys being in the salon and is looking for something uh, or for a, a space that's going to be comfortable and relaxing for her, right? Those are things that we know about this person or we can draw inferences about this person just by looking at her, right? And then we can have conversations. How was your day today? How was work today? What do you do for a living? How many kids do you have? Those sorts of things uh, are all, again, lifestyle questions that will flow pretty naturally from the inferences we can draw from what we can simply see, okay? The other thing I want to point out when it comes to Dr. Barbie here is body language, okay? I hope you guys know this already, and if you don't, uh, here you go. Um, the strongest way or the most important way that human beings uh, communicate with each other is through body language, right? So if Dr. Barbie strolls in, you know, in her sensible work flats and her, you know, doctor coat, um, and she's like, hey, I'm here to see Chelsea. I'm, you know, I, where can I sit? You know, if her body language is like that, very open, it tells me that maybe she's had an okay day, right? Um, if she comes in and she goes, I'm here to see Chelsea, and she's looking at her watch and she's looking around, maybe tapping her foot. Her body language is telling me that she's closed off. Maybe she's had a hard day. Maybe she doesn't want to talk about that stuff a little bit, too, you know, as much as I would like to. So I do think that, it, that it's important that we uh, are aware of our client's body language just as much as what they're verbally telling us. Okay. So the, those are the inferences we can draw from Dr. Barbie. Okay. The next one I'm going to bring out here is this one. Similar hair color, okay? So again, we make, we draw certain inferences from what we can see. As a hairdresser, you know, we look at this and say, okay, either she's super genetically blessed or she just recently colored her hair, fine. But if we look at what she's wearing, um, at this point, this is, oh, she's only got one shoe on. I wonder where she came from. Um, but, you know, I look at this and say, okay, maybe she's out for a night on the town tonight, or maybe if it's, you know, first thing Saturday morning, she hasn't been home yet, right? There's certain things that we can, inferences we can draw from what our clients are wearing and the way that their body language is, okay? We'll skip past that one. The last one like that I wanna show you is this, okay? There's a lot of these in my house. So if this client comes in, okay, first thing I see is that she's really young. Okay, so if this client comes in without a parent, maybe there's some conversations we need to have there. Let's, let's assume just for our purposes today that there's a parent with her, okay? Um, or even better, I'll do you one better. Let's assume that she's old enough, maybe she's 15. She's old enough to be out on her own, right? She's got a backpack on, we can draw an inference there. She's a student, right? Now, a lot of hairdressers would see a backpack and think, well, you know, if she's a student, she's not gonna be able to afford this or that. Don't do that, don't get stuck in that trap because you don't know. You don't, it's, uh, you know, when the client brings that up, okay, fine, but don't get sucked into that, okay? Backpack on, probably a student, okay? Maybe she's like really smart for her age and she's a university student, we don't know. Um, we've got, you know, pretty sensible clothing, things like that. But if, we've, if we know that she's a student and we can tell that just by looking at her, um, we know that maybe if she's asking us for certain things, she's not gonna be able to maintain them. Um, maybe we need to keep it simple when it comes to at home product. We certainly need to keep it simple when it comes to, um, maintenance schedule, right? So again, we saw Dr. Barbie, we saw Princess Barbie, and then we saw, I think this is a knockoff American Girl doll, but definitely a student. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about client segmentation. Okay. Uh, when we, when you guys see, like I was saying before on the app, when you guys see your, um, uh, your paperwork on the consult consultation pad is what I was looking for. Sorry. Uh, when you see the consultation pad, you'll see all of the things that I talked about are up at the top there, the six elements of consultation below that though, they go towards client segmentation. Okay. So are we looking at a trendsetter client? Are we looking at, uh, you know, a client that's more into, uh, you know, ingredient consciousness or, you know, there's many different, uh, there's many different client segmentations that we can have, but they also relate to our product choices, right? 
So this is something that I, I'm very passionate about and I teach a lot in the salon is what product is appropriate to choose for that client. And these are all things we're going to know in consultation, right? If a client sits down and says to you and they've got, you know, 80% gray and they say to you, I don't, I hate my gray. I never want to see it. I'll be back every four weeks to have my color touched up. Awesome. Come back every four weeks. I will take that, you know. But what does that tell us? If they're recovering gray, we need to use an oxidative permanent color. In this case, we need to use Colston Perfect, right? We need to make sure that we're covering that gray, that we, you know, have that, that expectation for them, right? But that client didn't say to us, I want you to use permanent color on my hair. They said, I hate my gray, right? Uh, even better than that, if that gray client sat down and said to me, they don't even need to say to me, I hate my gray hair. If that client sat, sat down and said, oh my God, my roots are so bad and I just feel so dowdy and old and witchy, that translates to, I hate my gray, right? So we need to get to know those clients and draw those inferences, okay? Um, if a client sits down and says to you, I've never colored my hair before and I'm super nervous, right? Is permanent color, call us perfect, going to be our best choice for that client? Probably not. I'm probably going to be in a color touch or a color fresh even, depending on the scenario. If you guys haven't used our beautiful semi-permanent color fresh, uh, get on it, run down to that distributor and grab it, it's so nice. Um, so we need to make sure we're paying attention to those things as well. What product uh, is appropriate for that client? So that's what your consultation pad on your app is gonna do, guys, is really tie those six elements of consultation into those client seg segmentations to translate to product use, right? My favorite thing about it is it also will translate to our retail products, right? Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves in consultation is when a client, uh, when, you, when a stylist doesn't talk to a client about product till the very end, right? Now, I, I grew up in the age of like everything that you put on the client's hair, you should be talking to them about. And sometimes that's hard. At the sink, it's hard to talk about a treatment sometimes if a client's got their eyes closed and is like super enjoying their massage. Don't interrupt them. Let them have their little massage moment, you know? Um, but we, you need to make sure we're talking about product in consult. This is what it's going to take to take care of this hair. This is what I recommend, um, in order for you to achieve the goals that you're looking for, right? Um, so product usage is also really, really important. Okay. So, and we can connect those things to our client, uh, segmentations as well. If you have a client, one of those ingredient conscious clients, who's very aware of what's in the products that they put, uh, into and onto their body. Um, if we discover that in consultation, then we know that maybe elements is a great choice for them, uh, for take home products. That's our sulfate free, paraben free and artificial dye free, uh, line. And my favorite leave-in conditioner, uh, in the world. If you have kids that swim, throw that elements conditioner into their swim bag. It's one in a million. Um, so yes, your client segmentations will always connect to your retail products and your color choices. Okay. Uh, I just want to give you guys a couple more scenarios uh, as, as far as it relates to product choices um, before we do a little wrap up. Okay, so our next um, our next client is this guy. So we all have this these clients, right? Well, maybe not we all have. I have a few of them, right? And they're super fun and I love my vivid clients that let me be creative um, and really are so most of the time are pretty easygoing, right? Um, this client in consultation, if they, if this client is going to stay this color, right, this client needs to know about take home products. This client needs to know about maintenance schedules. This client needs to know not necessarily exactly what we're going to use and what we're going to do. That would be an over inform, right? But this client in consultation needs to know, uh, what a, a maintenance schedule and what take home products look like to maintain something like this. Okay which if anybody wants me to do this to their hair, I'm in. I've actually done a leopard print before. It's really fun. Um, so let's say though, this client in consultation shows you this inspo picture, right? Now we've got a little bit of a situation, right? Now we need to have a little bit more of an in-depth conversation about our, um, our advising step, right? In our, in our six elements of consultation. Does, do we need to tell this client, oh, we're going to have to pre-lighten it and I'm going to use exactly this and we're going to do this and that? No, but the biggest thing we need to do in consultation to take this client to this client is management of expectations. 
I think in for hairdressers, I watch them a lot get stuck on what products am I going to use? And we're going to get to that in a second, right? But we need to manage this client's expectations, right? How long are they going to be in the salon? What is their budget going to, going to look like to transform them into this? Long term, this is way less budget uh, than this. But turning this into this or the other way, for that matter, is a pretty hefty bill right at the beginning, right? So management of expectations for this client, either way you slice it, is probably your most important. So if we've got this client, who is a color fresh creator, a semi client, okay, turning them into this client, which is probably a color touch and a blonde or client, we need to listen to them. Are we covering gray, right? Underneath all of this, is there unpigmented hair? Because then maybe it's not a color touch client, maybe it's a Colliston Perfect client. Right. So to have my point, guys, is that to have this client say, I want to have hair that looks like this. That's not enough. Right. We need to know, is there gray under there? Are we looking at unpigmented hair? Are we talking about, um, you know, longevity of color? Like how open to different tones are they? Because turning this to this, you know, in an ideal world, um, is probably pretty easy with a little bit of a cleansing rinse and a little bit of zero, zero, zero. Awesome. But if you end up with something that gets stuck, it's another whole arena, right? So my point is if we've got a trend center client that wants to turn into something that's a little bit more, um, a little bit more natural, a little bit more easygoing, we need to have a conversation about longevity and maintenance schedule. Okay. My client jumped off the couch here. Hold on. Okay. I got time for a couple more here. I think. Okay, I'll give you guys something else. Let's say this is our client. Because this is my favorite stuffy my kid has. Um, let's say this is our client, right? We've got 100% unpigmented hair. Yay, isn't this, I would dig, I would love to have hair like this. Sorry, my ring light just turned on. Um, yes, it's done now. Um, I would love to have hair like this. So if we've got a client that has hair like this, right? there are certain inferences that we can draw, right? If they've got really long hair and it's all like this, the biggest question, if they come in with an inspo picture, let's say they came in with this picture, I need to know why. If you have hair like this, why do you want to have hair like this? What happened? Maybe your boyfriend broke up with you. Uh, maybe, I, maybe your cat died. I don't know. There could, we've all heard these things in the salon, right? Like these things all happen. So we need to know is this by talking to this client, not about hair, about lifestyle, is this client going to be regretful turning into this? Yes, it's a stingray. Okay. So, but I'll go back to my point. If this client brings in this inspo picture, right? Maybe we've got a little bit of a, maybe this client smokes and that, cause compared to this, this is quite yellow. So, this client needs a little bit of like cleansing and maybe they're just, they want to do something cool and have a few flecks of pink put in there, right? To this client, this might seem simple, right? Because they don't count on the things that we count on. Underlying pigment, exposed, uh, contributing pigment. Uh, they don't count on the fact that natural hair like this probably ain't gonna hold on to this all that well with that closed up tight cuticle, right? So, but they don't count on those things. It's up to us to know, is this natural? Did she lighten her hair? How are we gonna get rid of this buildup before we can achieve something like this, right? Don't tell those clients those things in summary. Once you get it worked out, it's up to you up here, right? But this client needs to know that maybe it's not as simple to get to this as she, he or she thought or as they thought. Um, and we certainly need to have a longevity conversation, right? So back to my stingray, last but not least, this seems like an easy one, right? But if this is our client, Okay. And the client brings in this picture, right? Maybe they're like, Oh, I just, it's looking a little hollow and a little bit dull. I think I'd like to have something with a little bit more warmth and richness to it. Okay, great. But sometimes it's not as easy as like a straight color straight across. We need to talk to that client. What do you see in here? Because in here I see gold, maybe a touch of copper, right? But if a client, if this client comes in, maybe they don't have an insult picture. Maybe they say the dreaded word caramel, right? What does that even mean? It can mean a bunch of different things, right? So if we've got an inspo picture, great, but we need to know what this client sees, right? Now, a lot of times we may want to bust out our swatch book, things like that. Remember guys that the swatch book is our tool, not the client's tool, bust out celebrity pictures, right? If you want to be a brunette like that, are you more of a JLo glow? Or are you more of a Sofia Vergara, right? 
there is a difference there <laughs> in hair. I mean, obvious differences in, you know, the people, but there's a difference there, right? So don't be afraid to bust out your phones and get out those inspo pictures and talk to those clients when it comes to it. But that client saying like, I'm bored and my hair looks dull to in their brain, they see the stingray, but maybe in your brain, you're seeing the puppy, right? So try to have those conversations with them. Do those in-depth consults, guys. It's so much more important than, uh, than a lot of people realize to be on that same page and work through those, uh, those product choices, right? Uh, so I don't have any questions in my question card and I am like one minute over time right now. So I'm going to sign off. I just wanted to say thank you again for Wella Canada West for hosting me. Um, I want to make sure that you guys get your app, go to your app store, your play store and download your Wella education um, app. It's so great. It's information at your fingertips. Um, please go ahead and you can give us a follow if you don't already follow us at Wella Canada West. My personal uh, Instagram, I only have one, um, is chelsea.wella. Uh, so I would love a follow on there as well. And if you guys need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, please wash your hands and be safe. We love all of you guys and we can't wait to be back in the field and see you guys face to face. Um, and please remember that your knowledge is not yours. You don't own it. You know, we were all given things in this industry that were meant for us to, uh, uh, you know, one day give away as well. So um, if you have teams to share your knowledge with, please do that. You're the, the, the caretaker of it, not the owner. Okay. Have a great uh, Thanksgiving weekend, everybody uh, in Canada. And to all of our American friends, please go and vote. We'll see you guys soon.